Good evening and welcome to Free Media, Free Minds, uh, CTV's new show looking at issues of media freedom, censorship, journalistic ethics, social media and the access to information. Uh, in the studio with me this evening, I have Mike Aldridge from Cape Town TV and Nkwame Tsidile from the Right to Know campaign. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Uh, we're going to kick off tonight's show with an insert uh, that tries to answer the question, is South Africa's media free? Hi, and welcome. And today we're discussing the topic of the topic of freedom of media. And with us today, we have a freelance journalist. Hi, my name is Yazid Kamaldin. I'm a Cape Town-based freelance journalist and photographer. In what sense would you say in South Africa that f media is free? South African media compared to, its, uh, ca uh, to other countries in Africa is very free. Uh, in South Africa, we have the right to criticize and be critical about our government, our leaders, as well as interrogate and investigate what's happening in our society. Uh, at the same time, we also have a lot of voices coming through in the media. There are opposition voices, uh, people who have an opinion can feel free to express themselves via various platforms. We have radio stations, TV stations, free newspapers, independent newspapers, uh, newspapers owned by multinational companies. So there are many avenues for people to express themselves, and that is an indication of a free media. At the moment, the biggest threat to the freedom of media in South Africa is legislation that the government wants to pass, and it's the Freedom of Information Bill that is currently in Parliament, and our government wants this to, to be enacted into law. This would mean that they, the government has the right to classify or make secret certain documents. That means they can withhold certain information from the public, including the media. The danger of this is that it inhibits the work of the media, which is essentially to play a watchdog role over what is happening in society. If the media does not have access to the information of how government works, we cannot inform citizens about how their government and in effect their taxpayers' money is being spent. Another issue that is very much a threat to the media right now is pol uh, it's, it's politicians. Politicians are very determined to keep out of the media a lot of what is happening in the government and what is happening behind closed doors, and that's because of corruption. We've got a lot of corruption in the South African government, and there are people who are benefiting from that, and they don't want others, of course, to know about it. We also have politicians who are blaming the media incorrectly for all ki making all kinds of accusations against the media in their bid to stifle and to, to, to silence the media. The internet is an integral part of the media. The internet is everywhere. It's on your phone, it's in internet shops. It's, it's easily and readily available for anyone. The role that it plays now is that it allows us as a democracy to really participate in a national conversation and an international conversation via a medium, the internet, that connects everyone. So whether you're sitting in an office, in an ivory tower, in your home, in an internet cafe, in anywhere, in a township, we are all part of the same conversation via the internet and we can all be part of that conversation. That is a very liberating medium. It is a medium that has also allowed us to express ourselves for, without the restrictions of advertising or uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult to get your voice heard in mainstream media and the internet allows us a platform to easily publish work, easily publish, uh, as journalists, easily publish our opinions and also as the public to, to, to challenge society, to challenge the system and the government and whoever else we feel needs to be challenged. So, Mike, uh, we use media as a kind of catch-all phrase. What do we mean when we talk about the media in South Africa? Mm. Well, the word media, media means uh, a medium whereby we can communicate with one another. So when we speak to one, one another, we communicate through the medium of air. Today in our modern society, we have different forms of, of media in a formal sense, those being a print media, the broadcast media, and new media, which are delivered via the internet as well as other media such as DVDs and that kind of thing. If we think about the mass media, your TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, 
I mean, what, what are the different types of media? What's the difference between our public broadcaster and commercial or community radio, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, different media have different uh, driving mechanisms. So commercial media, the driving mechanism is making money. That's what they're there for. It's a, it's, it's a, a business. Uh, then on the other hand, we have the public service media, which is your public broadcaster, the SABC, and your community media. Mm. And Kwame, in the insert, we were, we were hearing that a strong case to say that today in South Africa, the media is free. Would you agree with that statement? Yes, it is available. It is free in the, in the sense that it is available. But who is making use of it? I mean, a person whose right might be violated in Kailicha might not, you know, who would want his story or his story to be published in the mainstream media. That story might not see the day of light in the mainstream, mainstream media. Or even the SAPC. I mean, what the SAPC would usually... Uh, be broadcasting is your um, soapies and you know mostly football and sports entertainment for that matter but not issues that would be um, for community development right Mike would, would you agree that there are limits to media freedom that Nkwame is uh, describing mm -hmm. well I think we have to assess media freedom in relation to power and uh, so one has to ask, in, in, well, you know, firstly, media exists within an e economy. It has to be uh, su sustained. Mm. And, uh, but, you know, when, when, when assessing freedom, then one has to look at its relation to power, whether that power be government or, or, or mm. uh, commercial, uh, as well as the, the law and the, the culture in, in yeah. which it exists. But you would agree that if you compare today to the, the days when we lived under apartheid, our media is a lot freer than it was. Oh, yes, certainly. I mean, uh, we have more media. So, for example, we have the whole community media in, in, in the, at, at the broadcast level. And, of course, we don't have the same kind of repressive laws that the apartheid regime imposed to suppress the media and to suppress that means of, of communication between people. In Kwame, there's a lot of talk, especially in the commercial mass media, about media freedom being under threat. Uh, not only the limitations of commercialization that you've already spoken about, but what are some of the threats that you see on the horizon, potential threats to media freedom? I mean, one of the threats would be the secrecy bill that is being proposed uh, by the ruling party. Um, that would give, I mean, government officials the right to classify information, and that would be a threat to what we have, um, what we have fought for during mm. the anti apartheid struggle. I mean, this the secrecy bill is a direct threat to the hard-won freedoms that that we have. Mm. Mike, do you see any other threats on the horizon? Mm. Well, I think that we have seen some uh, instances where journalists have been uh, intimidated and harassed by, mm. uh, by the state. So, for example, we have uh, the journalist Mzilikazi Wa Africa, the Sunday Times journalist who was arrested in an extremely heavy-handed way by the, by the police. So, as I say, when, when, when assessing media freedom in relation to power, one has to, to, to look at what uh, kind of of environment uh, journalists work in and the kind of challenges they face in, in, in getting in, in information and also when they expose in, in information that might be potentially embarrassing to the people in power. Well, I would like to add that um, another threat to, I mean, to community media is the underfunding, you know, that mm. they, they, they experience. Now they had to um, um, depend on extreme measures, you know, by depending on charismatic churches and, and the likes, or if it's community newspapers, they have to depend on advertisement, meaning that they stop being the voice of the community and be the voice of the, the private sector. Mm. Many people have said that community media can't fulfill its mandate because it's so dependent on advertising. It can't afford to offend private sector interests. My coming, coming from the community media sector, would you agree and what alternative forms of funding can you imagine that would still allow the media to be independent? Mm. I think there's a, we, one has to look at the basic principles 
And, uh, you know, when, when media is funded by advertising, there is a, 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 an imperative or a, a pressure for that media to serve the interests of the advertiser in delivering audiences through what the, the, the easiest uh, means possible, which in, you know, is generally in, in entertainment and, and those kind of things. If we want a media to serve the interests of the public, then we have to look at how can that media be funded in a way which ensures it, its in independence. That's independence from commercial interests on the one hand and in independence from government on, on the other. That being said, there, there's, there's still a very strong case to be made for, for government support for community media. Now that government support can take different forms. It could come in the, in, in the form of government uh, paying community media to, uh, uh, to, to show its programs, for example. It could come in, 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 in the form of some sort of taxation system where the citizens uh, contribute towards the sustainability of, of, of the media. So for example, through a levy on their el electricity bills. Um, but at, at the same time, one needs mechanisms to ensure that even while that support is forthcoming from government, that the community media is still strong enough to maintain its, its editorial independence. independence. And Kwame, would you agree that uh, media is a public good and should be supported with public money? Definitely. I mean, media is a right I mean, for communities to access and to utilize and that it should be government's responsibility to, to support community media um, without any conditions, you know, yeah. and without any direct involvement to censor what the, the output would be. And I, I, I agree with you when you say that um, communities should have the right to, to use it um, and, and, and guard, I mean, for, the, for, for their own interest. A guard against government manipulating the process mm. for community interest, yeah. Yeah, right. So, apart from the commercialization and the secrecy bill, there's also the uh, fear of a media appeals tribunal. Can you quickly, Mike, give us a sense of, we've all heard the, the buzzword, a media tribunal. W what's your understanding? What is that and what, how does it represent a threat? Mm. You know, I think the problem is that the ANC and its allies see themselves engaged in, in an ideological struggle with, um, with the, the, the commercial sector or the commercial media, in particular the, the print media. And uh, that is, is, is partly a result of the lack of diversity in South African media, because if one looks at the print media, one can see that they are owned by just two, two or three big corporations. Mm. And those corporations are obviously pursuing their, their own interests um, in, and, and utilizing their media for those purposes. Mm. And I think that the, the, the problem is that there isn't sufficient diversity of, 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 of voices mm. that, you know, they, they are there so, so that uh, the positions or the points of view of the ANC and its allies can come forth clearly through particular media mechanisms. Mm. So that is why I think that there's a very uh, pressing need for uh, government or public support of media that can mm. uh, you know, give al alternative points of view to the kind of positions that are being punted yeah. by the mainstream commercial media. Yeah. In Kwame, does it worry the Right to Know campaign that a handful of big corporations have really got the power to set the public agenda. They tell us what to talk about over dinner or, or when we're having a beer. Mm. I mean, that for us is a big worry indeed. Um, we cannot have a situation where 90% uh, of our media is owned by five big companies. Mm. I mean, media should be diversified. Uh, communities should have a right to, to, to um, quality, community-based media of all sorts. Thanks. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to look at the question of access to information and how we can make uh, the right for people to actually own their own media a reality in South Africa. We'll be back. Uh, 
Uh, welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. Uh, just before the break, we were beginning to look at uh, the media tribunal, as it's called in the commercial media. Uh, our politicians have said that they have a right to dignity and to privacy, and that the media can uh, destroy their reputations without any consequences. They are calling for a tribunal where journalists would be sent to if they uh, were to violate someone's dignity. Mike, your, your views, I mean, we still don't know what the tribunal would look like. Well, I think the, the thing is that the ANC feels that the current uh, protective mechanism, that is the press ombudsman, is not a sufficient, uh, sufficiently strong to protect them where journalists actually get stories wrong. And, uh, you know, po possibly there is a case to be made for that. But, uh, you know, my, my feeling is that politicians or people in public places kind of give up their, their, some, some of their rights to privacy. Uh, for example, if, if one looks at their financial affairs, now, you know, financial, looking into their, their personal finances might be a, a way of uncovering corruption. So do they have a right to prevent people from finding out whether they getting bribes or, or, or other corrupt practices? Well, I don't think so. So, yeah. yeah. There is a real threat that something like an appeals tribunal mm -hmm. could become uh, something that scares journalists into not even investigating, not even exploring for fear of landing up in front of a tribunal. Yeah, I think particularly in view of the kind of prison sentences that have been mooted uh, as, as possible consequences for journalists <laughs> who you know, yeah. overstepped the line. Yeah. So yeah, I think one, we have to be very, very careful when, when considering the, the, the merits of that media, yeah. media appeals tribunal. Yeah. Although we must stress at this point, it's only an ANC proposal without much detail and the ANC's call is that it must go to Parliament so that South Africans can discuss it. It's something this show will be watching closely, I can assure you. Mm -hmm. Kwame, politicians and their right to dignity and privacy weighed against the public's right to know? What's your take? I mean, as the right to know, we like, we really like to stress that um, whose dignity is it that they want to protect, you know? Um, we know that South Africa is a is, is the number one unequal society in the world. Is it their, is, is, is it their, I mean, is it, is it that we would, if these things are published, is it that they, it's going to spoil the party that they're enjoying since 1994? Um, is it that they want to show the failures of, 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 of 1994? And the fact that, I mean, land is still in the hands of, you know, of, of, of the few. You know, sure. while the majority of the people are staying in, in subhuman living conditions, mm. is it the, you know, is it the indignity that they want to yeah. hide rather, rather than their dignity? Good question. If we look at South Africa today, though, before the secrecy bill is passed, before we talk about an appeals tribunal, do the people on the Cape Flats, Mitchell's Plain, have access to information, would you say, today, with today's law and practice? Access to information is a challenge, I mean, for the, for, for the working class, I mean, for the poor in the, in the Cape Flats. People still live in conditions where they think that it is normal to live in those conditions. Had they had access to information, they would have acted upon that. And we know that most of the service delivery protests are, are based on the fact that people, you know, assume certain things and they, and, or they know that it is not normal to live in certain conditions. And for that matter, see how, you know, the, 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 the luxury that politicians live in and therefore demand the right to, you know, to live in dignity. Mm. So access to information is a challenge. We know that South Africa has uh, the, protect, the Promotion of Access to Information Act, which um, is supposed to make it easy for communities to access information. Yeah, in fact, the Constitution gives us the right to access information. Section 32, yes. And the protection of Promotion of Access to Information Act is meant to make that right a reality for mm. people. Mm. What has been your experience on the ground? We have invoked that right as, 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 as right to know in several communities. And we have uh, been asking, you know, since time immemorial now, that uh, we want to know as to who is in the waiting list, in, who is in the housing waiting list, you know, 
or who owns land and where in the Western Cape, and that information has not been forthcoming, you know? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I recently read a statistic that said that over 75% of applications for information using that act are completely ignored. So it's an act that exists in law, but in practice we really battle as citizens to access information. I mean, yeah, Mike... I, th I, th I think that uh, access to information in our society is unfortunately uh, uh, limited by e e economics. You know, wealthy people have far more access to information than, than, than poor people. Uh, people in positions of, of, of power have, have the ability to limit others' access to information. So we have uh, uh, situations where governments and powerful private companies are able to block people from accessing information that they should actually be allowed to access. And any uh, legislation that further entrenches that barrier must be really looked at very hard and where necessarily fought and, 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 and defeated. Because as citizens, we must have the right to know the information that affects us in our lives. Mm. And we, we, you know, obviously there are areas of, of information that government has a, right, a legitimate right to protect, like uh, security services, uh, for, for, for example. But other information that affects us as citizens, we must have the right to access yeah. that information. And of course, journalists, in a sense, are the servants of the people. It's their job to go and ferret out that information. I mean, what are some of the uh, challenges that are specific to journalism and, and how are journalists dealing with them today? Mm -hmm. I think that you know, there, there are various aspects to that. For, for, for one thing, the, the, one has to look at the culture. So, you know, after the, the kind of repressive society that we had under apartheid, there uh, was developed quite a culture of secrecy and paranoia in society. And that culture it, it itself blocks access to information. Um, we have a, a, a pretty free media in, in, in terms of the legislation, the laws governing media. And we also have laws which protect people's um, dignity, like uh, defamation law and, and those kind of things. Um, but, you know, journalists always have, uh, have to find the, the means of accessing information. So they have to develop uh, their relationships with sources, uh, often anonymous sources. And, um, you know, they have also have to be able to operate in an environment where they are not intimidated. Or, or, or harassed or those kind of things. For me, I'd like to Shoot. come in here and say that both the Secrecy Appeal and the Media Appeals Tribunal are desperate attempts by the ruling class to hide their failure since 1994. Sure. Mm. Uh, Mike, if CTV was free, if you didn't face the kind of commercial constraints and the, the political and legal threats that, that are emerging, what kind of uh, role would you like to see the station playing in Cape Town? Mm. Look, I think uh, a, a community television station has a very vital role at the local level to inform people about local issues and local events. Uh, you know, we're not constrained, as I say, particularly in terms of the laws or, or, or anything like that. It's, it's really uh, the, the funding to give us the capacity to reflect uh, what happens in Cape Town. And we, you know, we simply don't have the capacity in terms of equipment, in terms of people, in terms of the money needed to, to, to run things, to really provide a, a, a superb quality uh, service yeah. in, in, in that regard. And of course, when we think of a superb community media service, we shouldn't immediately picture a CNN of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine it would look very different to CNN. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we are able to ha reflect very different views on CTV. You know, we have, we, we have a lot of things on CTV that would never no appear on the, on the mainstream uh, television. So, you know, I, I, I think we have to also not forget that the media landscape we have today is the result of a revolution, of a democratic revolution that has given us this, this, this space to be a community broadcaster. Uh, but we know now going forward, we have to deepen and defend that, that, sure. that, that space. Nkwame, 
What would a free media mean for the people of Kyalice and Mitchell's Plain if, if we didn't have the constraints that we've been talking about this evening? What would your vision be? It would be a free, I mean, it would be more media and more media and not less media. And that it would be, I mean, people accessing daily newspapers, having their you know, community daily newspapers, national radio stations, I mean, um, national community radio stations that articulate community issues, you know, issues that affirms youth, young people, and all spheres of society, and educational programs that, that, that builds a whole person, you know, and not the, the current setup that we are faced with now. Mm. Mm. Well, there you have it. A, 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 for me, quite a different vision to what we have today. Today, a media dominated by scarcity, driven by advertising, commercial imperatives, the commercial media controlled by three big companies, the public media controlled by one massive company called the SABC, the vision of local media serving our people, telling the stories from people's perspectives, not trying to scare people or sensationalize or hype. I think when we, th when we say that a free media can free minds, that's the vision we have, uh, that's what I hope this show in the next 13 weeks is going to be able to explore. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank you for coming to the studio this evening. I think it's been a wide-ranging and interesting discussion. I uh, thank the viewers at home for watching. The show was brought to you by the Fedrich Echbit Stichting, uh, Cape Town TV and the Alternative Information Development Center. And we say be informed. Until next time, consume your media critically. Thank you. I have changed the idea of a democratic